Dilly and the body snatcher right here. It's a champ. Big up to sports and icon. Subscribe. Otherwise, I might pay you guys a visit. All right. Dean White, thank you very much for joining me. How are you, my man? I uh, appreciate it. Thanks for having me. I'm all good, man. All good. Fantastic. So how's everything in like a general life before we get into like boxing? How's everything in there? Uh, um... You know, things are good. Things are good. In the gym myself. Deals in the gym very, very hard. Um, you know, he's making some slight uh, additions to things and stuff. I'm sure he'll talk about it shortly. But all for the better of the good of him to be an better athlete. Um, better person all around, you know, you know, you know, as you get older you start to look at yourself in the mirror very closer and, 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 and you know, you know that obviously from the whack fight, um, he came in two stones heavier. So, you know, if you can't admit yourself where there's things that need to be addressed and focused on, then you're kidding yourself, you know. So as a team, you know, uh, and, and members, me and him, and then him and his team sat down and we spoke and we said, you know, you want to start early, man, because this is, this is possibly going to be the year or next year. So, you know, to get yourself in that shape, you want to give yourself ample time. So, you know, he, he started well, I've started, you know, doing my bit. And, uh, yeah, it's going good so far. It's good 220. Fantastic. I mean, we'll talk about, about like I did in, um, I mean, a second, but we talk about your uh, management company because you're advisor for Black Box Management, aren't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's, it's coming on, you know, it's actually, uh, um, I've just got a couple of boys, that's probably, I, I'm signing one today, actually, not a bad, not a bad, not a bad boy. Um, Is that a prospect? Um, I'll probably, I can't really release too much names until it's all on the, the dotted line in this game is a tricky game, you know, but you know, you know, I say that and then he doesn't turn up to the meeting tonight, <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, yeah, I'm signing a boy tonight, he's not bad, um, I think he's 4-0, uh, he's come through, I've got a, a, a heavier weight, a heavy weight coming, but I think he's going to go down to cruise away, mm -hmm. um, he's just, he's just got his license, um, so, and then I've got um, another super middleweight, um, I think, I don't know if you heard of Steve, Steve Woodall. Steve um, Woodall? Um, is there any relation to Richie? Uh, no, no, he's from <laughs> Birmingham. Oh, he's, right. uh, he's, he's a super middleweight. I think he's a middleweight. He's 15 on one. He lost, he lost to Steve Rose. You know, um, the guy Glockin beat Steve Rose. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's his only, that's his only loss. He's, he's, a, he's, a, you know, he's a very good amateur. He was on the GB. Um, Squad with um, Cheeseman, Huey Fury, and a, a lot of those boys at that time. Yeah. Was like number three or four in the world when he was an amateur. I went to the World Kings and um, mm. won multiple national titles and so many other things. So, but then he's done his whole career in um, America with like oh, you know that Showtime and Luda Bella. I think yeah. He was signed. To, so you know he, he's going to be fighting in March. I've got him, um, you know, with a decent promoter. So. Yeah. You know, I think we'll be seeing him on our, our screens shortly. And uh, let's see if he can live up to uh, his, his past glories. But he's been out for about three years, so, you know, okay. he's in good shape. Um, so I'll probably get him a few fights and then hopefully get him challenging for some titles, man, and see what he's really made of. Oh, brilliant. So you uh, manage and advise uh, Shaq and Pitts, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I work with Shaq and, yeah. That's right. Steve, Steve's out of the same gym as Shaq and, actually. Okay. The east, east side, bo east side boxing. So, yeah, Shakan. Shakan's um should be fighting Craig uh, Richards there mm -hmm. on the twenty eighth of March. That should be in Burnham. I'm hearing. Yeah, um, that's a McKennessy show, isn't it? Yes, McKennessy show. So, yeah. so how is it then? Because obviously, like um, uh, with like Shakan, obviously like like good friends with him as well as like managing him. But you're very good friends with Spider Richards as well. <laughs> <laughs> this is my friend. <laughs> Don't make it you know, difficult. It's, it's been a tricky situation, you know. There's been a lot of contention for a while, like, in terms of like, because um, I didn't really want to do that fight. I was, um, I, you know, I, I want the best for both boys. You know, I, you know, I, I don't want to see a loser in this situation. And um, you know, I think there's a, there was enough space and room for them to both do their own thing. And they will hopefully come down the line a little more fight for you know, for more money. It's worth it, you know. I but, um Obviously, the, the, the cards and the hands we've been dealt, we've just got to go. Because remember, I, I'm an advisor for 
team. He's got an actual manager. So, yeah. you know, at the same time, they went and, you know, pursued certain things. And I spoke to Shaq and he's like, listen, man, this is the fight I want. I want to fight for that belt. And obviously, I know Craig's your friend, but he's in, obviously he's in my way kind of thing. So, I said, fair enough. You know, uh, I've got to put that aside and try and advise him as best and see what's happening. Um, so, business is business, isn't it? Yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. So, you know, um, in the end, they sort of made that fight. But, you know, it was it's quite a weird one because I did hear Eddie saying um, that Craig's potentially got bigger and better things on, on, on the table. Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm not sure, you know, he said, that, you know, it's a potential that fight can be made and then they've got bigger and better offers. So, I, I don't know what the situation is um, as of yeah. Eddie likes to keep his cards close to his chest. And um, so it looked like they were talking like they've got options. I don't know, maybe they might try and get into the European title somewhere or something, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Or, or they, but um, did you see that interview when he was saying that? Yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah, I did. Yeah, so I'm not, I'm not too sure what to read into that. But, I mean, if if a Craig pulls out of that one because it's for the uh, English title, he may not get another opportunity for the English It's a deep division anyway. I mean, there is options for like so many uh, domestically and, and of course abroad. Yeah, no, there, there's loads of, there's loads of um, black heavyweight is stacked in, the, like, in, in the UK and abroad. But you know what's funny? That, there, there was a guy, um, what is his name? The one from Cardiff. He slips me right now. Oh, uh, fact, Craig. oh Cody, Cody Davis. Yeah, Cody Davis. I don't know, he seems to have gone under the radar. He pulled Zach Chelly, and that was meant yeah. to be for, um, you know, for the was it Eliminator or some sort to yeah. fight, um, to fight Craig. That's right. And then um, he said he was going down to super middle. Mm-hmm. That's right. Which was a bit strange. That was a bit strange anyway, because he was huge at that heavyweight. So he was. Yeah. I don't know what was. I don't know what was going on. And, and then now I've actually heard he's actually now that they've mandated. Um, Shakan and yeah. Craig. Now I've heard that he's actually coming back to that everywhere. But um, there's, there's loads of good boys, you know. Just there, um, in deep level, it's, even, it's actually even more dangerous up there. There's so many, so many top draw boys. Yeah, I think uh, Cody. I think he's still managed by David Hayes, isn't he? Really? Yeah. Well, um, I know he was. He was part of that stable. You know when David Hay and Richard Schaefer announced that big thing? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember, but mm-hmm. I actually heard... Yeah, again, I'm letting out probably people's secrets. I don't know if it's a secret. Who cares, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. But, I mean, I heard... Um, he, obviously, Sam Jones is an advisor, right? Yes, correct, yeah. But then I see... Joe Kawasaki there quite a lot. Yeah, Joe Kawasaki, um, they've been like a friend ever since Cody was like a little kid. Okay. Yeah. I don't know actually. I wonder, I'll have to give him a call and find out. But maybe low key, we'll have to see. But I don't know, maybe I'm just reading into things. Yeah, yeah. Oh, did you watch the uh, the uh, Wilder Fury press conference yesterday? You know, actually, I, I just watched them all this morning actually. I watched, I watched there were different clips I watched mm. and different um, perspectives from different people interviewing. But I watched the main one then I watched. I think I think seconds out of someone else's. Mm. Yeah, interesting man. I, I, um, I, I'd like to go down there. Funny enough, you know. But let's see. Let's see what happens. Um, yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on, and five dates. Yeah. I'm trying to arrange for boys, so mm. it's all um, up in the air. But yeah, well, I'd like Tyson Fury to win. You know, just just for the UK. You know what I mean, English lad or Irish, whatever. But it's still, mm. you know, over this side of the pond. You know what I mean? Correct. Right. But it's an um, interesting fight. Nevertheless, I think um, Jonte Wilder, though, for me, I think he's going to start a lot earlier than he did yeah. in the um, in the first fight because he seemed to he seemed to just get a bit bamboozled with all the the irky jerky, the shaking and pink sort of fury, and then later on he, he caught up to Fury and got him. So he knows, you know, there's you know he's got the power to do it, and probably there's nothing to fear, maybe. So I, I expect him to come out a little bit faster, I feel. At the same time, I, I bet 
believe Fury is going to come in a lot fitter. Uh, he's had he's had he's had a couple more warm up fights now mm-hmm. to settle himself down after having such a a long layoff. So I expect him to be a little bit better than his his um trained trainers because he said he felt like he needed new impetus. He felt like he was becoming stale somewhat. I don't know. Mm. But um, you know, it's interesting. It's definitely an interesting fight. Um, I don't know if he's going to do the numbers there. Believe me, they said it was the the biggest fight in boxing history that they've seen. <laughs> I don't know. No, no, I'm not no. too sure. <laughs> I'm not too sure about that. We all know about the numbers. Um, they done last time and the tickets they done last time and so on. So yeah, I don't know. You know, maybe they're trying to kid the media. What's your thought? Um, well, for me, I mean, I mean, the first one did uh, three hundred twenty-five thousand stateside, and Bob Barron's predicting two million. Um, no, <laughs> it ain't doing two million. Yeah. I mean, if it was free to air, maybe two million, but pay per view, no. No, no, it's just not. It's just not. I don't know. It's just not. You're not. You're not, you're not talking about that. Um, that Anthony Joshua. Uh, um, they've got wagon behind them. What they do, you know, they've got that. But you know, you're talking like the likes of Canelo who does good numbers or Pacquiao. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it's just, um, yeah, it's just not going to happen. Those two, obviously, what you got is you got Tyson Fury, the mouthpiece, yeah. and then obviously Deontay Wilder is trying to, you know, he's trying to give it up and trying to, you know, yeah, the the, the talk. But it's just not really. I don't. Think I mean, for me, I think that um, seventy-five dollars a pop, two million is a bit much. If it was like, I mean, with Joshua, I mean, Joshua does high numbers, and a lot of it's down to the fact that it's a relatively cheap price in the UK, isn't it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, America's a bit mad that with the prices they charge, though. Isn't it? Yeah. Because that's a, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah. Because that's 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 the only reason I think they're charging that much for Joshua because they don't want to pay the fee. Yeah. About thirty dollars somewhere. Thirty dollars, yeah. That's like wow. That's like two times and a bit of change. You can buy yourself a, a pack of beer. <laughs> exactly. It's not gonna. It's not gonna happen, man. They, they need to forget it. No. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, for me, I think that uh, the only way that that fight could become one of the biggest is if uh, Wilder loses next time, then he could have the Joshua effect of can he regain the belt? Yeah. But. I know we we'll have to wait and see what happens, but I mean, for me, when I had um, uh, Dillian on the channel about a week ago, and um, obviously speaking yeah. about potential opponents and everything, and, and I said to him that, now I've been trying to uh, push for the uh, Dillian and Wilder fight for a long time, because for me, and um, I've said it a hundred times, that uh, stylistically, Dillian's all wrong for him, and I think, yeah. but for me, I think Dillian versus Tyson Fury is a mega fight. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Head hunt. 
And as you can see, it's very, very difficult. Yeah. You know, um, to kind of, to kind of, kind of lock him down and get those big shots off to his head. You know. No, I agree with you. I mean, for me, that's a, that's definitely a stadium fight. That one. I mean, Dillian and Tarzan for, yeah, the, for the WBC belt. Absolutely. Listen, the whole country will be will be wanting to see that. Everyone will be tuned in to the two mega mouse, <laughs> to the to the to the you know to the two fighting men who want to fight and uh, and show their dominance. But no, yeah, that that fight is a hell of a fight. Yeah, yeah I think he was championing for for uh, for a bit before, and um, it didn't happen. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, so let's see, let's see what happens out of this because obviously he's potentially got the opportunity to fight the winner. I got a feeling they're going to do a trilogy, possibly those boys maybe. Yeah, they've already signed it, haven't they? Uh, say that again. That was already signed off. That was. Yeah, so I, I believe they'll do that maybe in September, mm-hmm. and then uh, you know, you know, get his opportunity to fight one of those guys again. signed up to fight for what would be a third time then really February 22nd that fight's not really that important is it it's the one at the end that's important yeah exactly mm-hmm. but I don't know what do I know you know they're the businessmen <laughs> 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 do you know what it is though it depends what kind of undercard they put on there as well because those kind of things play a big big part you know as well um, sometimes people want to tune in say, oh well that bloody fight again the last two was okay we not nothing great but obviously there's you know, a, a great undercard. Um, so maybe that 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 will sway them to it. But like you said, what do you and I know, eh? Exactly. <laughs> well, as of right now, I mean, we're only what thirty-eight days away, and there's no undercard whatsoever. Like so far, there's not even one fight signed yet. Yeah, it's, it's a bit weird, man. It's mm. not like um, like when they do the fights over here with Matchroom and Dillian and Tristan, and they they kind of they stuck them with. Mm. You know, good talent, exciting fights that people want to see. Yeah. Um, you know, and people that knock out and sell tickets as well. So mm. it's all mapped out. But like you said, it's, I don't know, man. I think they they did a good job. Though um, top rank ESPN with Tyson, you know, for the for the likes of the guys he fought, um, Tom Wallin and Swartz. Um, not to this Swartz for me was mm, really low. Looking back at Wallin, I watched. I watched him about a, a week ago or something, him and Fury again. He's actually, he's not a bad fighter, actually, mm. you know? I know I was laughing at him because he was an unknown quantity, but watching back, he was he was very hungry, he was determined. He actually, um, I didn't even realise he was a southpaw, you know? I didn't yeah. really get that. Um, maybe I overlooked it or whatever, you know? But watching it again, I was thinking, well, he done pretty good, but he was, a, he was a dirty bit of work. He'd done some real nasty bit of stuff in there, but... Yeah, again, that's fighting, you know. Those are the things that make the difference sometimes for you to get the win or the loss, you know. Correct, correct. And uh, as uh, um, Dillian said as well, he said to have that fight took place anywhere else, that fight would have been stopped and what Wallen would have got the, got the win. Yeah, no, no, absolutely. But, you know, when you look at this, this is, this is, this is, this is business. Mm-hmm. This is, this is, this is, we're talking about, when you're talking about people that have invested the money, what they've invested in, um, Tyson Trey, that was never going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. England, you know, no chance. They, they probably would have. But the corner's done well as well. The corner's mm-hmm. done well. So, uh, what's your thoughts, though, on um, the split with Ben Davison and uh, um, I'm sure it... I think that um, it's a bit of a strange one. I mean, I know that uh, now Billy Joe's gone back to Ben Davison because um, obviously Billy, at this stage of his career, he needs someone who's going to be one-on-one more often and while Tyson was there that's obviously going to be Tyson's always, always going to be the priority isn't he but um, I think with uh, Tyson and Ben I think that um, it's a case of 
I think Tarzan's hard to handle. I think it is. And I, and I think Ben was probably getting like a little bit fed up of it. And obviously John Fury, he wanted to change anyway. And I, I think John Fury's got a lot to do with it. Okay. That's what I think anyway. I mean, I'm not too convinced about Sugar Hill. Yeah, there's not much many people know about him, to be honest. Obviously, he's got the second name. Yeah. Of what is it? His cousin, his uncle, I don't even remember what they said he was. Yeah. He's got that fake name. His uncle, name. yeah. But, yes, but does he have uh, the knowledge, the experience on that kind of level to bring something extra to to, to get Fury across the line? Only time will tell. Yeah, well, I think he's, um, isn't it like his biggest name was Charles Martin? I might be wrong on that. I'm not um, sure. I'm not sure to be honest. Was was, Char- was he with Charles Martin when he fought Joshua? No. Or no, not? no, that was. Um, I forget who it was to be honest. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I know that um, he was obviously in and around the camp when Lennox Lewis and that was there. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, he's obviously seen a lot, but I mean. Just because your family member is a uh, you know um, a legend at doing coaching doesn't mean you're going to be, does it? So. No, for, uh, absolutely. But he, he definitely will have invaluable insight, you know, knowledge, the way obviously Emmanuel probably taught and so on. Mm-hmm. And um, he would try to mimic, you know, and try to use that kind of same, um, you know, mindset. You know, the way he probably talked and the way he gestured and gave guidance and so on I've got a feeling that's probably what maybe sold it to Tyson because obviously Tyson was down there with um, those boys um, a little while ago so yeah, it's 10 years know, ago, I think that's why a lot of people call it it's the famous crop gym he's got the name and he probably does know a bit because when you're around the sport long enough you know mm-hmm. if you don't take in stuff you're, you're a bit silly I guess yeah you know? oh, I agree with you I totally agree with you I mean obviously time will tell but I mean um, as far as but um, the uh, Sugar Hill training method is, um, is apparently attack. That's not really Tarzan Fury thing, and it hasn't really been since probably his twentieth fight. You know. Yeah, that's what. Is that why he was talking about? It was quite funny when he was talking about he's going to knock him out in, in two, two rounds. I was like, wow. Yeah. I, mean, I said, I hope he doesn't walk onto a big shop where he's trying to do that um, Superman stuff. <laughs> 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 Meet in the middle of the ring, slugfest, and all that. I yeah. don't know, man. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I just I'm, hope he does it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, I mean, for me, I'd love nothing more than Tarzan Fury to be right, but, uh, you know, I'd rather him not put his own chin on the line, <laughs> you know? To be honest, I didn't, you know, he's actually got a hell of a chin, because to be honest, I didn't even think he had that much of a good chin and he took that, that big shot. And I don't even know how he, how he got back up, you know, so yeah. major credit to him there. That's twice he went down and, and then managed to get back up. Not a lot of people who go down and get back up from a, you know, no, you know right. bronze bomber. I know there's a, I think Ortiz did it a couple of times and then he got himself yeah. baptized fully, <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah, but, did. um, did. yeah, it's not many people, so, uh, yeah, could it him, no? So, I mean, we've said like a similar things um, when, it, when it comes to like um, uh, your brother Dillian, which is um, now, Obviously, I mean, we're not going to go into like the whole UCAD bullshit kind of stuff, but the whole point of now he's the interim champion, mandatory, as of when that happens, he needs to be preparing for tall, rangy opponents. No, absolutely. Yeah, I've, I've, I've been saying that in, you know, in any interview, listen, it's just my opinion. I can only give him an opinion. Obviously, him and his team will dictate and decide what they're going to do. But um, any interview I do, and anything I, I said, he, me personally, he needs to be preparing for, uh, you know, he needs to fight someone who's six, 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 five, and uh, like Charles Martin, you know, get 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 comfortable with that. Is he, is he a southpaw or Super Martin or not? Yeah, he is. Yeah. Yeah, and and and, and Wallin is a southpaw. I, I didn't. You know, at first I thought Wallin might be good, but then that southpaw stuff, there's, there's, that has no benefit um, to him whatsoever. In fact, it makes it probably even more harder for him to fight those people. And try and maybe look as convincing as he would, mm. uh, as you have it, if you get what I mean. Because yeah, obviously yeah. you're gonna have to adapt to the style, and then you have to watch the the straight left coming down the pipe. Mm. You know what I mean? So it's it's um it's definitely yeah. um 
the tricky one that was on, but I'm not sure who else is out there that he could fight and that's going to be appealing to do a pay-per-view fight and that's going to be competitive and just enough for him to learn and try and, you know, I know they're talking about Povetkin, Povetkin's a very, very solid, solid fighter. You know, yeah. as much as, you know, we're talking about he's old, some people say he's past it, but I'll tell you what, that fight with Hunter, that proves that he's definitely not past it. Yeah. Hunter, no, uh, that, that Hunter, I read very highly, and he's a very, very dangerous fighter to anyone that wants to underestimate him because of his hunger and his desire. And he's just got that, he's just got that desire. And let me tell you something, that's the kind of thing what Dillian's got, you know what I mean? He's got a similar kind of desire where he, 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 he believes he, he, he can't lose. Um, mm. And that's always a dangerous guy when, you know, you're young, you're hungry, and you've got that desire. Obviously, he lost against Usyk, but he gave Usyk nightmares in there as well. Yeah, he did. He did. That's so... Yeah. And him coming up to heavyweight, because he's a, a small heavyweight, he's faster, he's elusive, and he's quite explosive. And he's just got an un, unorthodox style where he does some different stuff, which is, you know, um, I think I think it, I think it, um, it caught um, Povetkin off, off guard. And for me, you know, it was quite weird. I was like, what the hell, this guy is not reading the script. You know, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he, he came out the block, didn't he? And I was like, "Wow, what the hell?" I know. I, know. No, I mean, for me, I felt that Tomaso Hunter had just about won it. I mean, I don't argue too much with people who say one or one or the other is very close fight. But for me, I thought that Hunter just edged that one. But you know what? I think I was happy with a draw because it was ahead of a fight, and it was one of them ones where I felt like you know. Both men had their, their played, played their part and made it equal as exciting something. Sometimes it's one of the ones where you think, you know what? Um, no one deserves to be a loser if you get if you get it. So to mm. me, I was I was kind of happy with the draw. I felt like um, Povetkin caught him a few times and buzzed him. The ropes kept him up one at a time. So that should have, even though they didn't give it, I counted all of that in because you know sometimes certain things don't go your way. So I think if that went in, then that would have swayed it towards. Perfection if you got that, 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 that the you know what I mean? Yeah. No, so, sure. um, yeah, it, all of that, I just weighed it up with that kind of thing in mind. So, well, they never gave a 10 8. There was another time he, he was buzzed and then he dipped under and then he held. There was a few times, but I was really solid. He managed to, you know, use his experience and, um, hold on, sorry. He might use, some, use the experience and, and get through and hold when he needed to. Yeah. And got through it, so you know I think you know it's a fair result. But I know what you mean because he started like a tornado. So I think mean, <laughs> people look at that as well, you know. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I think as a standalone fight, uh, Dillian and Povetkin is a fantastic fight, and as you as you saying there, it's um it, it's like a crowd pleaser. But I think that um, I must be honest, Dillian he's earned that title shot now. He's been through the wars. He's risked it. Why risk it anymore? You know, just take some learning fights now. Yeah, no, no, absolutely, absolutely. I think um, the fans will be happy to see that fight. Um, like Joe said, it's a battle of the left hook. Um, he's got some, he's got some very, very deceptive shots. Old Alexander, you know, he's very strong. He's a very slow starter. Um, he comes on strong down the, down the stretch, but he does look like he's gassed out and he's like. Uh, red, that deep blue red, and then you think there's nothing in there, but he's still in there swinging, taking shots and giving the, a great account of himself, so it's quite an unusual one, but then what we're going to have to look at is, he's not faced anyone who goes to the body as well as Dilda, so, yeah. um, you know, them body shots, I think, would we'll, we'll, we'll take their toll on him, you know, um, yeah. and he doesn't like being roughed up either, as you saw against, um, oh no, he doesn't like that rough and rough it and rest of his style and whatever, but, um, Listen, you can't take now. Former Olympian gold medalist, former world champion. Listen, but I just feel like um, the only thing in that fight is it's a good fight for fans and maybe financially, but it definitely does nothing for you towards um, being prepared for the likes of Deontay Wilder, the likes of Tyson Fury, and uh, edging yourself into a, a, a position where you say, "Well, you know, I'm I'm, I'm prepared to fight." someone who is six 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 seven six nine because obviously he fought he fought whack and that was a that's that's a whack that was in the best possible shape he could have been um whack i heard was in camp for about three four months he looked a lot slimmer 
And um, in Nick, uh, do you know I, what I need to probably do is go back and check what weight he was against Miller and what weight he was against Coley and so on. And mm. um, I heard someone say, "Oh, whack!" Um, a, a four days notice or some some rubbish. But um, no. the, fu- <laughs> the funny thing is, whack had a lot more notice than that. You know, um, whack, whack was whack was well prepared because he was he was meant to be fighting the end of um November so he was full in camp ready you know full in camp ready for a fight so it's totally different saying oh all they've done is change the opponent Dylan wasn't fully in camp ready he got um they spoke about it and then he was like yeah all right well you know what this is the day and we literally only got books and confirmed like that days yeah, that was kind of crazy. So, well, um, it's supposed know, to have been Eric Molina, weren't it? But Dillian said that um, he was gearing up for Eric Molina. I think they were looking. Mm. So, and, um, and, and Wax has always been someone that people can count on. He's very durable. He's got a great, great chin. Uh, got a great right hand and can punch. Mm. Got a great chin. So, it shouldn't have been no surprise mm. having, having all the, the things... Um, didn't have to contend with that. It was going to be a very tough, tough night, you know. So, um, I just, but like, like I said, I'd like to check what way he was against um, um, Miller, from, mm. just for my own records, and you know, just to so, you know have that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but again, you see, yeah. people forget that. Uh, Okay, so Dillian did come in in the best condition, but there's a reason why he went through five months of absolute hell. And, um, yeah, 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 but you no, know, people don't care sometimes, you know, they, you know, they're just looking at the, the result and, uh, you know, you hear them like, oh, he went, I think they for this journey, man, and even if they think he is somewhat of a journey, man, wax, he, he's, he's, a, he's a top, top level draw fighter, he's, he's only had what, I think before that was at his fourth or fifth loss, this might be six, you know what I mean, and he's been in there with the best of them, you know what I mean, and he's still, you know, yeah, he, he's still, you know, very, very good. So I've got a lot to offer that guy. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the thing, because um, I see comments saying, oh, well, Dillian didn't knock out Maris Wack. How's he supposed to knock out Wilder and that? I'm like, well, two different chins. You know, Maris Wack has never, ever been yeah. put down on his ass. Maris, Maris Wack's chin is totally different, man. I'd like to have seen that she jumped to Wilder and punch him on the chin and see what actually happened. <laughs> <laughs> Like said with uh, John Taylor Wilder, yes, he's got power, but I think a lot of it's more speed. Speed kills. Yeah, uh, absolutely. His, his athleticism, um, how he moves, and it's quite weird how he turns the shots as well. Mm. You know, and he generates that kind of power, but uh, you know, he, he uses any parts of his hand. That's why he bloody um, broke his hand and his arm as well. <laughs> well, yeah. He, he's got like a, like a metal pins on that in his hand, doesn't he? to be fair, um, well, so fair, with uh, Wilder, he always aims for the back of the head. And for some reason, opponents don't seem to duck and go forward. They tend to lean back, so they get, then they get caught flushed. Yeah. It's not a bad shot. I like that shot, to be honest. It might not be illegal, it's probably illegal, but it's mm. one of the best shots I like to throw when I used to have a little tear up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Of course, you can get away with it, do it. Yeah, exactly. Listen, it's, it's not cool, but it's at the end of the day that the rest in there to do a job and then you fight to the ref really, you know, so Exactly. Yeah, you don't want to be getting bashed on the back of the head by Dante Wilder too often, so <laughs> Definitely not. Definitely not. Because I always hear that, um, you know, how can I say that uh, Dillian would be Wilder? Because um, if Wilder lands on Dillian, um, Dillian will go to sleep. I'm like, right, okay, that's fine, but is he actually gonna land on Dillian before Dillian lands on him? You know, this is the sport we love it. You know, like everyone's got an opinion on what it is. You know, and um, that's that's what it is. That's why it's so exciting because you know the thing in, in time all 
be revealed quite quite soon once the fights are made. You get to, you know, everyone has their opinion. You can even go to the bookies and put on what you feel. And then, um, you know, one way or the other, you know, you, you, get the, you get the verdict we're all looking for, you know. But because of, you know, the power and what the record tends to hold, obviously a lot of people are going to be looking and saying, well, you know, but like you said, the stars make fights. And um, I think this, I think Dillian Star is more suited to, to him. I just think he doesn't seem to like the rough on his chest, maybe, you know, the phone booth style, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I don't think no one goes to, um, John Taylor is quite slim, um, someone going to the body, I don't think he's never fought anyone like that. So, you know, it all, 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 makes, for, all makes for good reason. And he's, he's there to be hit, you know what I mean? He's definitely there to be hit. Right. Oh, I've seen him wobble a few times. Yeah, 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 you got the limit the time, you know, he hits you. But like you said, he's only got to be right for like two seconds. And, you know, most people who fight have literally got to be on their best to, um, you know, get the, get the win. A lot of people, as you've seen over the years, have gone in there and out boxed him and come up short. That's right. He's not the most technically gifted boxer or fighter, but he has a knack of winning. And, and that's the champion's mindset and will in itself, you know what I mean? Because oh, at the end of the day, all anyone's going to remember in the history books is the win. And they're going to remember that he knocked most of these busters out. <laughs> that's true. So, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Later on, when they're talking about it, they're going to say, oh, well, you weren't that great skill, but I'll tell you what, he could he could ask, he couldn't need that son. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. But again, I mean, he hasn't knocked out anybody elite yet, though, has he? Yeah, do you know, but he hasn't, obviously, you've only got a small segment of the real elite, but then you've got the fringe elite, which you, I'd probably call them, because, you know, when you get to this kind of level, it's, it's kind of, to me, it's like, um, it's very difficult to get there. You've got good boys. Say, for instance, like, when we was, um, not when we was fine, but like a little while ago, I don't know what people thought of Gorman, but Gorman was half a, half a decent boxer, you know? Right. And then, obviously, now, he's full, Dubois, lost, and then he's somewhat gone on the one. I'm not saying he was going to get to world level, but he was definitely someone, you know, people t- t- you know, should do good things. He was fast. He, 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 you know, had good hands. He could box. He could punch a bit, just like David Price. Yeah. You know, he was, back in the day, when we was coming up, he was another man tipped for greatness. He was he, uh, in the Olympian. Did he go to the Olympics, David Price? Yeah, yeah, he got a bronze medal in 2008. Yeah, so he was someone, six, eight, tall, great jab, Great power when he was with Frank Maloney doing his thing, and he was like the real hope back in the day. And then things changed, so obviously, I know the times are different now. Uh, money's different, things are different. But I mean, those boys who reach in and around that world level who are like fringe elite kind of thing, people, you know, people should give them credit because the boxing is there's, there's, there's great guys in history who have never actually got to that kind of level and competed and, and, and done what some of these boys have done, sell out pay-per-view cards and done this and done that, you know. Some of them might have won world titles, but yet again, when you when they won the world titles, they didn't make a fraction of the money these guys made, you know. Right. Um, and then they didn't become the superstars what these guys became. So it's quite, it's, you know, it's, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of a crazy one. He, you know, you've got Eric Molina, he's up there, but yet again, he's the person that, he's the either, fringe journey like what boys want to fight him to kind of get past a certain level if you get what I mean like Stavern you know once he was a former world champion but now people are using him as some form of a, okay, a stepping but, stone yeah. Yeah, in their in their journey so you know it, it, you know this fight game is a hard game man it's, as much as people sit there and you know it's quite funny you know that meme have you seen the meme when when they put that meme with a fat guy sitting in the couch, oh, this is what I would have done. He's got the bear, he's big old belly. That is so typical and yeah. funny as, as anything because it's true. You know, like the you know the people who took the most smack about stuff, or you know, potentially that or this, or even it could be some muscle bound guy who thinks he could go in there and do that and whatever. You know what I mean? We all yeah. we all fantasize and think this and that, but yeah, again, it's an opinion. Um, yeah. And uh, and that's what we love about this sport. People have the right to their opinion, as long as they're not too disrespectful. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And um, yeah. but um, yeah, it's, it's quite it's quite it's quite it's quite weird, anyway. Well, it's strange. I mean, like um, when I was like a little bit younger, 
Um, I used to like, I love boxing, the sparring, all that kind of thing. And I thought I was pretty good at it. And um, as like the years have gone by, um, I went to uh, uh, my local gym here in Newcastle. Um, you know Joe Laws, Joseph Laws? Hello? Oh, so can you hear me? Yeah, so, yeah, no, you broke up for a second. You went there, so who? Uh, Joe Laws. Okay, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so um, uh, I'm all in there and uh, we had like a little, like a muck around uh, spa and he punched me straight in the nose. I was like, right, I've had enough. <laughs> I ain't doing this. I ain't about that life. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is too funny. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I... He's, from, he's from your neck of the woods, is he, Joe Laws? Yeah, yeah, he's in Newcastle, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a pretty good boxing scene up here at the minute. I mean, unfortunately, it goes under the radar, but, you know. Yeah, no, I heard there's, um, there's some good boys in that kind of way up. Yeah. Um, there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's an amateur gym up there that's kind of popular where a lot of the um, GB boys are, uh, are coming from it. Is that true? Yeah, there's quite a few of them. Um, a lot of them who who are, like went through the amateurs are in like a Wall's End. Uh, they've got like a new um, uh, like a top of the range uh, vision gym now up here as well. And you've got the MTK Newcastle. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, we've, just we've got a very good heavyweight up here. He's a, he, he's actually sparred Dillian. Yeah, in uh, Steve Robinson. He looks like Ivan Drago. Is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, two and zero, oh, and um, he sparred uh, Dillian once before. I wonder who that is. Yeah. No, so well, he, was he, um, he, no, he weren't in that competition because he's 2 and 0, so he definitely weren't in that competition. So, oh, I'm a boxer. Um, no, he weren't, no. So he's 2 and 0. Yeah. Well, how tall is he? He's, what, 6 foot 6, something like that? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is he any good? What's his amateur record like? And like? Um, I think he lost three times, but on split decisions. How many fights did he actually have, though? Um, he, he didn't have a great deal. I, th I think he only had about 40 or 50. That's enough, isn't it? Yeah. 50. Did he win anything? What did he win? Um, he won a few titles. He did. Uh, but um, he decided to go um, um, into the pro game because uh, his manager slash trainer, Mark Cluzel, who um, used to be um, um, chief sparring partner with Manny Pacquiao, he took him on. And uh, with like, the mindset of... Don't spend too long in the amateurs because then you're going to get like a bit older then it's harder to adapt into the pros. Oh, okay. Yeah, but I mean, um, he's had two fights. In his first fight, he floored his opponent with a jab. And in the second fight, he literally Apollo creeded a guy. You know, he just put him down and the, the guy was out cold on the floor. He's a massive puncher. He's a big puncher. He's a massive puncher, yeah. I mean, he looks like Drago, punches like Drago, <laughs> you know. Can he, can he take a punch, though? That's the thing. So far, yeah. Um, um, he's never hit the deck yet. Hmm. We'll have to get, it, get him to come down and uh, do, do, do some sparring with, like, um, like a Dillian and Fabio Wardley in there. Yeah, yeah, he's a big old dump. I'm sure Dill might use him again. Yeah. I wonder, I, can't, I don't remember. So he must have went to Loughborough and done some sparring, yeah? Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, um, I don't think that um, he was there for like a whole camp. He was just like, like an in and out kind of job. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, uh, I th and uh, he was an amateur at the time as well, so. Oh, oh interesting. Does he, and he fight, does he fight on the MTK Newcastle show, does he? Um, uh, he did on the last one here, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did. And he did a MTK charity fundraiser one on, on his last one as well. But oh, okay. Actually, I think he's in London today or tomorrow, actually. Okay. He, yeah, he's, he's, um, um, he's got a meeting with uh, Frank Warren. Okay. Yeah, he had to see if, if like a Frank can offer him like a couple of fights. Yeah, yeah I mean, you have to wait and see, see what happens with him. Yeah, that's all right, man. Big old unit. Obviously, Frank's always looking for heavyweights. He loves it. Yeah, he does. He does. He does. Yeah, he loves it. He loves the heavyweight division, man. Mm. Or is he? He better just hope that he ain't trying to line him up for Dubois to fight. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Well, what do you think about like um um Dubois' career so far? I mean, if I, I think that um he's been guarded correctly, but mentioning the name of Dillian no, is not the right thing to yeah, do right I, now. 
he's definitely being guarded. Yeah, I think though the level of opponent does need to go up a, a little bit though. Yeah. You know, that fudgy mo or whatever he was <laughs> that fudgy fudgy. I don't know man, that guy was like I don't know, obviously former kickboxer came in. I don't know, you know like I just didn't obviously, you know, he moved the right for a little bit until he got baptized as well. But yeah. I just felt like he needs to maybe try and look at the landscape and see what other guys who are there that um they could fight and get. But it's kinda of difficult because obviously it's down to finances. Mm-hmm. And obviously they're on BT school, all they have all they have a lot are on sky, so you know, it's across the ponds, you know, do they offer enough money but do you not want their guys to go over there and face them? I mean, so it's kind of a, a bit of interesting one. Do you know, oh, mm, so it's just kind of seeing, but listen, he's, he's, got, he's got great potential, got a great jab, very, very strong jab, mm-hmm. good right hand. Um, he, he, he's, coming, he's coming to give a nice, but he's still got a long, long way to go for me. But listen, any heavyweights, you know, like they're talking about the likes of Dini and this guy, obviously if he hits you on the chin, it's obviously got a problem. But yeah, again, as we saw when um, Latte hit him, that what was new, he got rocked to his socks. He did. Uh, and, uh, you know, and Latte is not in, even in the league or class of a lot, a lot of the people that even Dini has even fought, you know, so. That's right. It's one of those ones. So you got to, do you think Latte beats Marius Watt? No chance. <laughs> Definitely not. You know what I mean? Definitely. So, not. <laughs> yeah, so we got a, we got a, we got a chance to look at it like like that, you know. So, um, but I think he's doing all right. I'm just thinking, who do I mean, that Joe Joyce and and that's that's a that's a big step up in terms of that. If you're looking at that, that might be a step too far for him. Maybe even uh, possibly that's what I was actually just, just thinking because I think. Um, you know, there's, well, well, I think maybe if he had another fight, because he's only just fought for the, for the, for the British. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. But, so, but now he's got a ranking for the WBC silver, which of course is what uh, Dillian held for the longest time. Mm-hmm. I mean, I would mind seeing him fight, fight maybe, I don't know, like a Nick Webb, something like that. Yeah, I think that would be okay. I think that would be okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think, that, that, I think that's a good fight there, actually, in itself. Look, Nick Webb's coming off a good, more okayish win in, um, you know, winning over a boxer. But he's a big old unit. Um, like he punches the unit like that. Yeah. I think that would be a good fight for them to make. Mm-hmm. Um, if they could get, because he's English as well, you know what I mean? I think that brings that into it a little bit more. Defend your belt against Nick Webb, yeah. you know, big old bruiser. He's going to come in. He'll have, a, he'll have a little go, he'll have a little go. And then if he gets caught... He's probably just gonna um, yeah. get kind of smoked, really, because obviously, like I said, he, that that he, that right hand he's got is pretty good as well. That jab right hand, so yeah, I mean, but I think he, I think it'd be a decent fight. An English opponent, who else is there um, that he could be matched against? Oh, what about um, a Jagba? What do you make of him? Uh, uh, he seems he seems the right. Yeah, again, but he, it's early days for him as well. Look, you saw if he got he got dropped by the other kid the other day. What's that guy's name? Oh, that uh, oh, that guy that Joe Joyce blasted out, um, oh, Kaladze. Yes, yeah. I remember. I remember him from Austria in the Klitschko camp. Mm. He was he was good then. That was a little while back. Oh, you in the Klitschko yeah, camp? Did you go over with him, did you? I'm, I'm, I'm sure he was there. You know, I'm sure he was there. Yeah. I'm sure. I've got I've got a good feeling that that guy was there, and he was giving him nightmares. Yeah. But that, he's a small guy he, and, he, and he moved a lot, you know? Yeah. Is that the Klitschko camp where Dillian and AJ were there? And who, and who was there? there uh, Dillian and, and AJ. Was he in the Klitschko camp then? Yeah, AJ went there then. He probably left, but then he was there after. Ah, okay. He was there for, was there for a few, for a little while. He was there for a couple of months, probably like six, seven months or something. Okay. So yeah, you I'm, there... I'm sure he was there and... um. What's the one that fought Bieber to the light heavyweight? I'm sure he was there. I know there was a couple of them Eastern European guys there. Oh, that's like a... I think um, he passed through there. Oh, the Gavozhik and the, a, the Ukrainian. Yeah, I think he was there. Yeah, yeah, some of those boys were there. Mm. You know, but there were different times of training. But I remember catching some of them, if you get my meaning. Like, yeah. When we came early, watching the sparring or, you know, like... Yeah. And we all kind of caught up a little bit. So, yeah. But um, I think even that fight, you know, might be um, a decent fight for 
the bar fight and that same guy that he fought. Because that guy's going to come and let his hands go. Yeah. That's right. Or but even I like a... I mean, I know people overlook him, but like a Sokolowski, he brings a punch and I, I don't think his resume does him justice. Which one? That's a Sokolowski. Do you know what? Sokolowski, after watching him the other day, I think he, he seemed to have just got a bit too old for me because I, I had him possibly being one of the favourites in the Ultimate Boxer Tournament. And, um, yeah, same. Yeah. He just didn't, he just didn't show up. He just didn't... Um, yeah, he didn't. He didn't show up for me. Mm-hmm. So he, he seemed. Um, I, obviously, he's always been good value for money in terms of what he's doing, and he's always come and you know be a fight and you know yeah be good value for money. And he's been the upset many times. Mm, yes. He's been the upset many times. So um. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, but if they make that, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of prospects coming up. If they make that fight though, with um. The war and jungle is a good fight, but I don't see. Obviously, Dylan is talking about the same date. I don't know why you'd want to clash and mm. give um, yourself a do, a do your promotion or you know a disservice either if it's if it's war or a sky. You know what I mean? Because one, of, yeah. I don't think why, you shouldn't do them on the same date, whoever it is. You know what I mean? No, exactly. Because I think the fans are being um, going to be pulled in two different directions unnecessarily. Well, that happened with uh, Dillian when he took on... Um, yeah, 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 with Frampton and um, what's his name, innit? Yeah, yeah, and Warrington, yeah. Yeah, yeah. in Man- Manchester at the time, yeah. But this is totally different because what you've got is you've got two heavyweights yeah. who are on the come up. Obviously, it's still, it's still a decent fight, you know? It's a fight people would still want to be tuned in, but then if you're saying Dillian fights for Vetkin, I'm sure the fans are going to want to see that more, mm. you know, because that's a... That's like a world level fight with, with the boys, but they equally still want to see, you know, I'm sure that fight also. Yeah. Really. I'd like to see that fight. I'd prefer it to be on a, a totally different day, these guys fights. No, I agree with you on that one. I agree with you. With me, I want to watch all of them. I don't want to have to choose, you know? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, um, Actually, yeah. you mentioned about the uh, Klitschko camp. Uh, uh, Dillian said that uh, he's seen uh, Deontay Wilder get knocked out, and not just knocked out, but twitching. Was you there as well? Um, no, I wasn't there, but you know what? I did hear that, not from Dillian. I heard that from... Like a Johnny Nelson? Someone. In, no, no, no. I heard that from someone else oh. when I was there. Oh, okay. That happened. You know? Mm. There was a few guys getting knocked out in there still. Like Titsko used to fix them with his, with his quick, quick, um, quicksand ring. That ring he had was a nasty bit of work. That ring, that ring, that ring. Yeah. Um, it used to, it used to. Um, I don't know what was in the bottom of it, but basically, it used to kind of get <laughs> get the fighter's legs tired, you know. Right. Well, I mean, he tried to use that yeah. on, on fight night, didn't didn't he? That, yes, exactly. So he's quite a clever little kid. So that ring, he trained on it all the time. When he used to go in there, he used to actually, um, he used to do like an hour or 45 minutes just mm. moving around the ring. That's why he's so good at moving. Yeah. So he'd do like a, a 45 minute, an hour, yeah. moving around and stuff. So he's obviously, his legs get conditioned to you working on that ring. But obviously those got, those got found out anyway, because they knew, because they, I think they, they, they've heard about the ring anyway, so um, they found out. But, but that, that ring would have probably tired, you know, because Fury moved a lot, that would have made him tired using mm. that ring, because it took, takes a lot out of your legs, you know? That's right. Yeah, it would do. And I think a lot of the boys in there, you know, after a while, after a little bit of moving in there, they, you know, they were complaining that, well, my legs are tired, but it was the ring. Yeah. So, and then obviously, he's used to it, so he'd catch up to you later on, and he'd baptise you. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, that's it. I mean, to be fair, I mean, if he made a comeback now, he could probably still give, like, some of the lads a bit, um, a bit of a run for their money. Listen, if he came back now, he'd give a lot of people... Listen, he saw that he was uh, the 41-year-old or whatever when he fought Joshua. He was in mint condition. He was in um, tip-top condition, you know? Yeah. And um, he performed well. He, he actually nearly beat Joshua. So, mm. you know, he, he he's someone that's lived a life and he still kind of lives the life, so I'm sure, and he's got that power. He always say the power is the last thing to go, so, right. you know, he'll he, he, he give anyone nightmares, so 
Um, I think if he came back, I think the Haber brother, Batali, yeah, Batali's actually a very nice guy. The only thing I think he, he would have done, um, I think he would have done okay, but he's actually got been gone um, too long now, you know? It's about five or six years now, isn't it? Yeah, I think, I think that's a bit too long. I'll tell you what, though, that uh, Herkovic, he reminds me so much of Vitaly. Everything about him just yeah, reminds he, me of Vitaly. Yeah, I know what you mean. I know, I know that's what you mean. And he's a strong, big puncher as well. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's going to be a problem in about a year or two, I think. Yeah, no, yeah, it, it seems like a nasty bit of work. Yeah. I watched the, but no, I literally watched the fight with him and um, Joe Joyce. Didn't Joe Joyce beat him? Yeah. No, no, Herkovich beat him in the amateurs. Was it that way? I watched that fight. I'm sure I thought Joe Joyce beat him. Maybe I didn't watch the end or something. It may be right. Like, Maybe I'll... I think I'm sure, I'm sure Joe, Joe Joyce beat him, you know, because um, obviously it's a good fight, but mm. Joe Joyce, you know, he's got a good time. He will just keep putting on the pressure. Mm. I watched it literally... Um, like, I, I think at the same time I watched, uh, I just watched loads of stuff, obviously, to refresh my memory and stuff. But then, even mm. now, I'm refreshing it, I only keep parts of it. You know, <laughs> there's too much things to store in the brain, but that was a good fight, you know. And um, in the later rounds in that fight, yeah. um, Joe Joyce was proper sticking it on him and just kept, but he was catching Joe Joyce. And that's the problem with Joe Joyce, you know. With mm. that fight, it's all going back to Dubois and Joe Joyce. Joe, yeah. Joe, Joe Joyce, sorry. Um, I think Joe Trace has got a lot more experience, very strong, got a good job, can punch. He just can't be getting caught um, yeah. as much by someone who punches like Daniel Dubois. Because it's going to really test his chin to the absolute limit. If he's just going to be, you know, walking towards and walking onto them, um, them big shots, you know? Well, that's the thing. And um, it was... Uh... Brian Jennings, he was uh, giving Joe Joyce that work. Joe Joyce was in trouble a couple of points in that fight. Yeah, no, even um, even though I do like I do like Sam. Sam's a you know good pal. He's a cool kid. Mm. Um, I did say to my fault, um, Jennings won though. I still think that still to be honest, you know. Yeah. Um, he had it with a body shot. And I think he just nicked it. That's just my opinion. And then obviously Sam won. Well, I can. Um, says, well, I won the first one with your brother, did it? And I said, well, there you go. So that's just opinion. It ain't about me trying to discredit anyone. But what I will say is, I definitely give those boys a hell of a lot of credit because Joe Dress has got probably one of the best resumes I've seen as someone who's coming mm. and for his first 10, 11 fights, has fought uh, just all top draw. Look at the names he's got on his resume, you know? So exactly. I give them credit there. The only thing is, I, I, I just... I don't know, I know they're working with Adam and they was working on some stuff, you know, I just feel like he, he gets hit just a little bit too much, exactly. you know, it, I know it's, 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 it's heavyweight boxing, man, you're not going to, um, what's going on here? <laughs> you're not going to go to the um, pool and not get wet, so, you, you know, everyone gets hit, yeah, you know what I mean, but I just feel like, you know, just a little tight, a little bit open, but the normal thing is he can take the punches. The problem is, is can people take his punches? Can people withstand the juggernaut, the pressure, all of that stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what normally happens. And he just wears them down and just keeps punching. And that's what he did in the amateurs, you know, which was working. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's quite a few yeah. uh, fights that Joe Joyce had in the amateurs that I'd be interested to see in the pros, like him against like a Tony Yoka. Um, I think, that, I think that's a Tony Yoka. He's pretty inactive at the minute, but he's still, he's still a good prospect at the minute. Yeah, I don't know what's going on with Tony Yoka, man. He, he went, he just goes, he's just been going really quiet, you know? Yeah. He had all this potential to do well and do stuff, and then, I don't know what happened to him. Who did he actually sign to over there? Um, oh, outside of France. Um, Wasn't it top rank? Yeah, I don't know, but I know he went out there with, with Virgil Hunter or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm not too and sure. Stuff. I don't know. Um, then he went out, he got a little, he got a 12 month suspension, came back, but he, he to be honest, he should be fighting on way, way bigger, because he's fighting on some real small cards, fighting people, mm -hmm. and just trying to do it all under the radar. I don't know what's going on there. I think he should be a bigger star than he might be. Because obviously, look, he won gold at the Olympics and he was tired. I remember him 